Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. Another exciting day in our final 72 hours of the 2020 peer-to-peer -peer global dental interdisciplinary summit. For the first time, every day is a new day with new surprises and new uh, events here at uh, GIS. Um, today, we happen to have all four regions, uh, well, four, four of the nine regions together, uh, from Brazil, India, um, uh, Greece, as well as United States, uh, on the same channel, speaking about the future of dentistry, which is minimally invasive procedures, as well as regenerative dentistry, as we believe. Um, to the, so we have Dr. Sandeep Singh from India, Dr. Ioannis Gogopoulos from Greece, as well as Carlos Moao from Brazil. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, thank you for joining us and donating your time and efforts. Few words about our uh, uh, conclusion of the summit as it's coming up in the next three days. Um, uh, please feel free to tune in and uh, learn more and share what we are uh, putting out in terms of knowledge and education that's complementary peer-to-peer, -peer, and we are on tra trajectory to possibly reach 2 million peers, doctors, dentists, uh, specialists, uh, supply chain members, assistants, hygienists, uh, across the world that will be able to help many, many hundred million patients with this initiative that we started 40 some days ago. But quickly about minimally invasive procedures and regenerative uh, dentistry. Um, the reason this is a significant session is because we have the founder of the World Academy of Growth Factors and Stem Cells, Dr. Ioannis, who has more degrees than anyone I know, real degrees, not, uh, uh, not fellowships and, 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 and uh, masterships, but MDs and PhDs and MBAs and all of that good stuff. Uh, Dr. Sandeep will uh, present his bio shortly. Um, then we also have the editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Growth Factors and Stem Cells. As you guys know, uh, regenerative PR, PRF is the is the new era. PRF is, uh, is is the era that is now ushering in. Some gentleman in 1974, I believe, a medical doctor, came up with the idea of PRP back in the 70s, and it was translated into other industries as well. But then came along Dr. Chacron with the PRF concept, where we could also use the membrane from blood concentrates in order to facilitate healing and those kind of things. And there's been a lot of dilemma around this whole PRF concept. Some strange people claim to have invented things they haven't. Uh, there's an alphabet soup of all these different uh, A, I, S. And we tried to make some sense out of it yesterday. But today they're going to go into a little bit of different uh, aspects of it. Dr. Ioannis has built a certain technique that comes from a derivative of PRF. And, uh, and Dr. Moao laid that out for us in very, very detail. So remember, the PRF era is ushering in. The, the World Academy and the International Journal are great sources for you to obtain classes, as well as learn about the latest articles in, in the PRF world and uh, blood concentrates. And I invite you to uh, listen to this uh, wonderful presentation. With that said, Dr. Sandeep, uh, uh, you have the floor for the presentation of the bio. Thanks, Keno. Uh, good evening, friends, and good morning also, good afternoon also, to all the, uh, the viewers of Global Implantology Summit. And um, 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 we welcome you here, because today we have Dr. Ionis from Greece. And uh, he is a DDS. He has done his MD. He is a PhD. Uh, he the in University of Bari, Aldo Moro, Italy. He is the clinical professor in the postgraduate program, master in advanced oral surgery, and implantology. And he is FMD, State University of Tirana Dental School, Albania. He's. Uh, why a uh, professor in BPP University S School of Health, Faculty of Dentistry, London, UK, and a faculty member until June 2018. And uh, 
uh, I think there is some some voices coming down from from the phone or somewhere. You know. No, we can hear you very clearly. We yeah, can hear you yeah. Very clearly. Uh, he's from the uh, PhD school, Enzo Ferrari, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, Biomaterials, Professor until 2015, Athens University of Economics, Business, uh, Executive MBA. So he's like full of degrees. Medical School Italy, Masters in Advanced Oral Surgery, University of Patras, Medical School, Rio, Greece, and then University of Athens, Dental School, Athens, Greece, DDS, and then University of Michigan, and Arbor, USA, Certificate in Oral Biology, University of Vienna, Austria, Dental School, Master Degree in Laser Applications, Diploma, Solar Laser Academy, residency at the 401 General Military Hospital, Maxillofacial Department, Athens, Greece. And above all, he's the president of VAGRO, the World Academy of Growth Factors and Stem Cells. And in one, and he's one of he's the inventor of IPG, DT sinus technique. This is the this is the unique thing which you are going to hear about today by him. And I got a chance to listen to him in Busan uh, when I met him with Ezio Geno uh, from Italy. And uh, I got a chance to interact with him with his unique technique where he uses the growth factor and then he, he placed the implant inside the sinus. So today you are going to uh, listen to something entirely different. And uh, as, as Kenor told us, that PRP is a bygone thing. Uh, this is the era of PRF, the autologous second generation growth factors. So we have Carlos. Yesterday I got a chance to host him and for a fantastic webinar. <clears throat> And today, me and Carlos and Kianor, all the board members of uh, uh, Global Summit, are going to host another board member, Professor Ionis from Greece. So over to Professor Ionis. Welcome. Beautiful, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sandeep. Um, just a quick uh, addition to uh, your interactions with Dr. Ayana that we have, and I have visited Athens and his facilities. They're beautiful. Carlos wanted to say a few words with his experiences and what the future might hold between the academy and the journal in reaching to more and more colleagues as they want to learn more about PRF uh, and, and other growth factor concepts. Uh, um, so, Carlos, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Anur. Thank you all. Thank you, my great friend, Ioanni. It's a, I'm very happy to be here with you today. And before starting to talk with uh, Ioanni and about him, uh, I'd like to refer uh, uh, something interesting. Uh, you are saying that uh, now is the area of the PRF, and we know that because the important is we need to reduce the quantity of anticoagulants because when we have anticoagulants, we we reduce the quantity of growth factors and cytokines. And you can see it from a uh, paper from Professor Eduardo Nitro uh, in part one in 2015. And in this paper, uh, Eduardo Nitro was the first to publish in 1999 uh, the P, uh, the PRGF, and it's a, the same of PRP, but it's a simple technique. And at that moment, he had a lot of uh, uh, anticoagulants inside of that tube. And now uh, we have the PRGF B, another letter. And the PR in the PRGF B, Doctor Eduardo Nitua 
he reduced the, the quantity of anticoagulant, the citrate inside of the tube, just to increase the quality of his blood byproduct. So if you don't have uh, the, the, the anticoagulant, you will have a better result for your blood concentrate. So that's why the PRF is the, 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 the best for, our, for us and for our patients. And we are here today to discuss a little bit with my friend, Ioannis Ganapoulos. And uh, he had been in Brazil two years ago with my uh, group in, in my hometown here in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, he presented his technique, the ITG technique there. And it was an amazing lecture. And thank you so much. Uh, I'm very, as I said, I'm very glad to, to be here with you. And I hope to see you soon, my friend, after this problem of, about okay. coronavirus. Okay. The floor is yours, my friend. You have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. So, hello everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Ioannis and I'm uh, speaking to you from Athens, Greece. Athens is a beautiful city, the capital of Greece, with mountains all around, the sea from one side, and the uh, Acropolis in the middle. In Athens, you can see a lot of things, ancient things and modern things. Between them, you can see the uh, stadium of the who hosted the first modern Olympic Games, and is a stadium that all made by uh, white marble. If you want to go to see the Asian uh, stadium of the Olympic Games, you can drive three and a half hours far away from Athens and see and go to Olympia and see this is the Asian stadium of the Asian Olympic Games. And uh, in the area of Olympia, in Peloponnesus, and where the Olympic Games took their name from. The ancient Greek says that uh, Greece is the middle of the world, in the Mediterranean Sea. And Greece is very famous for their islands that had. There are more than 3,000 islands, beautiful islands. But also, uh, there is an amazing sea. You can swim everywhere without uh, be afraid of sharks or other creatures. But I'm sure that the most of you doesn't know that Greece is a mountain country. It's full of mountains, beautiful mountains and lakes. And maybe you can visit Greece also during winter time to see uh, and have these beauties. I like to uh, speak a little about the WAG, about WAGRO, the World Academy of Growth Factors and Stem Cells in the Industry, a non-profit organization that has many collaborations and uh, affiliations with uh, other universities and organizations. And we offer uh, university master degrees, fellowships, and master classes with live clinical training. Our master programs, two-year master programs, have uh, 120 ECTS European credits, 300 hours theory and e-learning, 400 hours of clinical training, 30 implant placement certificate, and there are more than 180 international well-known tutors. And from May 2020, we start personalized clinical master programs due to COVID-19 and uh, so have uh, personalized masters with one or maximum two students. So the student is uh, participate in many surgeries, many oral surgery, many implant placement, and uh, can have a, a really live experience. We give a uh, masterclass certificates, but also uh, the master degrees, and you are welcome to join our master education uh, programs. So today I would like to talk to you about uh, IPG debt. 
IPC dead is a technique for grafting and simultaneously immediate implant placement in the problematic posterior maxilla without sinus floor uh, elevation. It should be emphasized that IPG is not a sinus floor elevation technique. What is a sinus floor elevation? We know very well that in the posterior maxilla, very often there is not enough bone to place implants. So we have to go through the sinus floor elevation procedure. There is not enough bone for, uh, to have initial stability. So we must elevate the Snyderian membrane, the sinus membrane, place bone graft between membrane and bone uh, crest, wait a few months for new bone uh, regeneration, and after we will have enough bone for initial stability so we can place the implants. There are two basic methods for performing the sinus floor elevation, the lateral window and the crestal approach. The first we did the lateral window has been Oscar Hilton in 1974, and Beyond has been the first to publish this technique in 1980. So we, there is a 46 years of experience regarding sand floor elevation. I like to mention that the major intraparty complication during this technique is the uh, membrane perforation. And the second uh, basic method for sinus floor elevation is the crestal approach or summer's oyster top. Less invasive method of elevating the sinus floor using non-traumatic expanders. But also during uh, this uh, method, there are uh, limitations. We must have enough bone, maybe at least five millimeters for initial stability. Sometimes maybe we perforate the membrane and we cannot see it. And we have also uh, complications. I like to say that no other technique has affected dentistry as much as sinus floor elevation. The last 46 years, billions of dollars have been spent on research, education, instruments, devices, books, techniques, etc., regarding sinus floor elevation. And there are thousands of similar uh, methods and techniques. All these techniques that has to do with sinus floor elevation have a common point to success. No perforation of the sinus membrane. So all the sinus floor elevation techniques says that if you want to have success, you must not perforate the sinus membrane. IPG dead is not a sinus floor elevation technique. It is neither a lateral window nor a crestal approach. Why? Because IPG dead's unique characteristic is intentional perforation of the sinus membrane. The name came from the initials of the founder and dead from the Dental Education Institute, where it has been the first surgery in 2006. After 2006 and the first surgery, they followed eight years of secret clinical research and the first IPG publication in 2014 has been covered paid at Journal of Implant and Advanced Clinical Dentistry. More with less. What does this mean? You know, nowadays we must and we can create a uh, more with less. When I was a student in the university and I had to do a research or a presentation, I spent no hours but uh, days in the library uh, to find out sources for my uh, research. Today, just push a button and you have everything in your screen. What is the more with less in the sinus? We must have better results with less flaps, less complications, less drags, less cost, less time. This is exactly what IPG Dead offers to dentists and patients. IPG Dead is an automatic implant placement 
without sense floor elevation by using autologous platelet concentrates, autologous or aerographs themselves, and with intentional perforation of the Snyderian membrane. This research regarding the CD34 positive stem cells we can find in the concentrated growth factors that we use uh, many times during uh, this technique. Another thing that is very important is that we, with this technique, we can place implants even if there is not enough bone for initial stability. Uh, here you can see an implant, the whole body is into the sinus, but there is stability. Here also you can see a tooth, that the uh, bigger part of the, uh, of the tooth is in the sinus, but also there is stability. Here you can see another implant 14 years after its placement with IPG dead. And here on the right, you can see this animal that goes every day to feed themselves uh, from, with a special phone like that, climbing like that, but I really don't know how they stay uh, on this rock. So with IPG dead, implants can be placed even if there is no enough bone for initial stability. How? By using the ATH IPG membrane that provides initial stability to the implant. Uh, ATH from Athens, because we create this membrane in Athens, and is an autologous blood delivery uh, membrane that offers the initial stability for the implants, even where there is not enough bone to do so. I'd like to show you a video. Understand how strong is this membrane. We can have this membrane within 17 minutes after the blood collection. And this membrane may retain weight up to 380 grams. You will see the elasticity and the strength of this membrane. We can place uh, many instruments and the membrane will not uh, break. I repeat, it's an autologous uh, blood delivery membrane that uh, may uh, retain weight up to 380 grams. And please uh, ask yourself, how much is the weight of an implant? How much? Maybe half gram, one gram? I don't think it's more than one gram. So we have a membrane that can keep a lot of weight to stabilize a small implant. And we can put more instruments and more instruments. We can put more instruments and the membrane will not break. It has a very uh, big elasticity and is very strong. So this membrane, we use it for the initial stability on after the implant placement into the sinus. I don't think you see a membrane like that uh, before. So how much does an implant weigh? I, I don't think it's more, I think it's half gram or no more than one gram. So what happened? When we place, and this is good to give a little tension, when we place the membrane through the side to into the sinus, a part of the membrane remains outside or inside the side. When we screw the implant, this membrane blocked by the implant between implant surface and bone around the implant. Also, this membrane is sticky. So the 88 membrane gives the stability to the implant and the implant gives stability to the APH membrane. I repeat, this membrane may retain weight up to 380 grams. And this is the membrane that gives the initial stability to the implant. The implant is always inside the growth factors and never 
uh, direct into the sign. And we know now that the strength and elasticity of this membrane is due, due to the incorporation of adhesive uh, glycoproteins. I'd like to present you our first case. Patient zero. Helene, a young lady that we follow all these years, came 14 years ago to take out uh, the molar and place uh, an implant. When I screwed the implant, I screwed the implant and was not stability, I took an X-ray and I saw, I had this picture and I said, oh my God, what is going on now here? But we decided to keep this implant like that and wait eight months because I, I have put a lot of growth factors inside the sinus before uh, the implant placement. So uh, two years later, we load this implant and the implant was okay. But because uh, I was a little afraid, I decided from the other side to place a very uh, big implant, a 10 millimeter implant. Maybe it's the biggest implant we have in the market. And this was my huge mistake. So uh, two years later, with this picture, these problems, I had to take out this giant uh, implant and uh, place another one with the same technique. Here you see the screw, but you cannot see the helium abutment because the helium abutment from Teflon. So we place this implant immediate after the extraction of the previous implant with the IPG technique. And today, 14 years later, you can see the uh, panoramic X-ray and the CBCT, 14 years follow up uh, with this patient without any problem. So IPG dead is based on molecular biology, autologous growth factors, stem cells and their properties and turns complicated science approach into simple. And there is uh, 40 years of clinical research and experiences. There's another research regarding IPG dead technique and the importance of the growth factors in the uh, OSHA integration. So in these uh, 14 years, there have been more than 3,000 implants placed with IPG dead technique. There are more than 50 doctors from many countries and more than 813 patients. And we have a follow up. We have a follow up of the first five years and a follow up of the second five years. And the first five years follow up, we had a failure rate of 4.2. And the second uh, period of five years, we have a failure rate of 2.6. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and I like to mention that in these cases, there are cases with implants that they have been placed without any initial stability. So this is very, very important. Our last presentation, publication, in the uh, Journal of Biological Regulators and Homeostatic Agents regarding 48 patients and 85 implants. All implants successfully also integrated and uh, we have newborn formation from 5 to 6.8 millimeters into the sinus. <coughs> this is very, very important. And I'd like to thank the, a lot of scientists and the eight departments of a very well-known university from all over the world that have been uh, participate in this uh, research. So the classical sound floor elevation treatment plan includes one or two step approach. If there is enough work for initial stability, we can grapping and place the implant in the same session. But if there is not enough work for initial stability, we have to grab first, wait a few months, and then place the implants. 
If we have a case like this, we can do lateral window, we can do crestal approach, we can do IPD dead. But if we have a case like this, with no enough bone for initial stability, we have to go through uh, the classical ways to go through the central elevation, and that means uh, different sinus floor elevation techniques, big local anesthesia or general anesthesia sometimes, big operation, more than one operation, transplantation maybe, intra and post operative complications, long time treatment, big cost, special doctor. But with IPZ, uh, IPZ death technique, we can place implants also in these cases that we have not initial stability. Usually when we have a, an extraction, uh, after the extraction, we, we use laser for decontamination. We use autologous growth factors, autologous ATH, IPG membrane, autologous back membrane, bone grant, not always, titanium mesh, not always, aggressive implants, always. I like to have an aggressive red implant because I like to use it like a screw. We know that the bone, the posterior maxilla is not very, very good. So I prefer to have an aggressive uh, implant during this technique. The growth factors are very important because we know that are the molecules that control anything has to do with healing and regeneration in our body. And is a power, uh, powerful tool for regenerative medicine. This is the bio membrane. It's a membrane that we create around the implant surface, autologous membrane, full of healing and regenerative proteins. And sometimes, not always, we can use a very small uh, titanium mesh for better initial stability. If we have not enough uh, bone, I mean, if we have no bone at all, I'll say. And this uh, small titanium uh, mesh are important because they uh, help to have more initial stability to our implants. <clears throat> I'd like to show you a video and see how are the procedures in uh, during IPD death. So we know that very often in the posterior maxilla, we have not enough bone to place implants. And we have to go through the sand floor elevation technique. But all the sound floor elevation techniques, what they say, if you would like to have success, don't perforate the sand membrane. But IPZ, we do intentional perforation of the sand membrane. After we use condensers, but very gently, because we like to have blood uh, circulation, so we must be careful how to condense the, door, the bone. And there are special uh, condensers, because I repeat, we must have uh, blood circulation. And we place the ATH membrane, this very, very strong membrane with a very big elasticity. We can place more membranes, but one part of these membranes remain through the side or outside. And if we like, we can place also bone graft. We don't use too much bone graft uh, nowadays, except if we have no bone at all. After we place the implant into the sinus, into the growth factors to uh, create a bio membrane before place it into the sinus. And when we screw the implant, 
The implant blocks the membrane around itself, and the membrane blocks the implant. In a few weeks, we will have the reconstruction of the sinus membrane, of the Snyderian membrane. And in a few months, we will have the bone regeneration. So this is the uh, IPG death technique. This is another research uh, regarding 83 implants with sinus membrane perforation and no postoperative complication in the sinus. Let's see this case. It's also an old case, 12 years old case. We place implants in this lady. You can see here the biomaterial that is sticky and stays around the implant. In eight months post-op, we did the uh, hostel measurement and we're between 63 and 69, providing high implant strength. But the interesting thing is, I'd like to show you some details, some details from the CBCP uh, pictures. Uh, here's pre-op, no bone, very little bone. You've seen four months post-op, we have uh, bone regeneration. But in eight months, eight months post-op, we have almost 10 millimeters of new bone formation over the sinus floor. And we were really wondering what's going on. Because very little bone, four months, start the bone regeneration, and eight months, almost 10 millimeters of bone into the uh, new bone formation into the sinus. And so we did the biopsy and we saw that it was really born with the University of Brescia in Italy. And we lose this patient. And after uh, 10 years, she called me and said, doctor, I have problems with my implants. And you know, when a patient calls and say these things, uh, alarm, because uh, uh, you don't know what the problem is. But it was really nothing was only the, the, that the bridge get off and we have to put back, cement the bridge back in the position. And the implants were there, no problem. And now uh, 12 years post-op, we follow this patient and no problem. It's another case with three millimeters for initial stability. In two months, you see bone regeneration. And in four months, you can see full osseo integration. IPG death promising results demonstrate that it can be considered as a reliable alternative to science floor elevation procedures. This is a nation theater in Athens. We have a lot of patient theaters with a beautiful performance during summertime. And it would be nice if you come and participate in one of these uh, performances. And I'd like to show you some uh, uh, IPGD death uh, cases. Here's a case we decided to place implants in the same session, left and right of uh, in the sinus. And here you can see the uh, CBCT uh, before pre op, and see after post op and eight months post op with the uh, after the loading of the implant with the process. And in this uh, case, we use uh, minimal invasive surgery on the right and on the left, uh, completely flapless uh, surgery. So we can, uh, we usually use minimal invasive or complete flapless during this IPG death technique. Is another research uh, that uh, shows that the addition of growth factors had a significant positive effect on bone uh, formation. 
Uh, this is one of the, our research that we have two research on the human being. <clears throat> this is another case that we have not born at all, how you see. And we place an implant, we place the titanium mesh for initial stability. And uh, you can see six months post op, no bone here, very little bone. And here, down here, you can see a bone regeneration. Here also, you can see the implants with the screw. You cannot see the Kilna Batman because the Kilna Batman is made from Teflon. And eight months post op, you can see how much bone we have around the implant. You see, no bone, a lot of bone around the implant with the processes. Is another research regarding IPDD death, also with uh, many uh, scientists from many universities. And I like to uh, speak about the steps during this uh, technique. If we have to do an extraction, we always use a laser for decontamination. You, we use condensers, we use uh, growth factors. We use the uh, ATH membrane. After we create a biac membrane around the implant, we place the implant deposition, and um, we use also the titanium mess. Only if there is not bone at all. After we place a, a PRF or CGF membrane, and uh, Sometimes we use also allograph, stem cells allograph. That is also very useful. <clears throat> this is another, uh, another uh, research uh, regarding IPG death. I'd like to show you uh, something very interesting. One of our students placed an implant with IPG death technique, but when uh, he placed this implant, uh, he placed the screw on the implant, he put the screw in the beta dying solution. So six months later, he couldn't uh, took out the screw and referred the patient to me, but it was really impossible. <clears throat> so we had to uh, remove the implant and see around the implant, the ocean degradation uh, into the science with IPG death technique is really very, very interesting. So, what are the IPG death advantages? Minimal residual bone height of one or two millimeters, minimal post operative complications, no importance of uh, sinus membrane perforation no pain, edema or hematoma, reduced chair time, less graft material needed, overcoming anatomical uh, obstacles, uh, symptom, short learning curve, minimal cost. Due to growth factors and IPG death, sinus technique, current surgery in sinus implantology is now simplified and improved post-op and our patient's life quality. Of course, experience is mandatory. Now there is also a kit from uh, Wagro, an IPG dead kit that is very useful for any kind of implant. And with this, I like to uh, finish and thank you all of you for your attention. You can uh, visit us in uh, Wagro site, Facebook, Instagram, and I hope to come to uh, see us in Greece and participate in our education program. Thank you uh, very much. Hi, my friend. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was an amazing presentation. Uh, I read, saw your presentation and but today you, you 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 brought more evidence of your technique and that was amazing 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to to ask you one thing. Uh, when you start to do this procedure, what did you think? Uh, are you are you thinking uh, something? Oh, I I can I can start this procedure directly in the sinus because uh, I saw some researches some research in, in in the internet on the internet and then uh, we can see probably more people from more doctors from India. Uh, doing the same research, but without the the growth factors, without the the PRF membrane. And what do you think about it? Is it yes, possible? I, I know I know this research, but uh, it usually are if they have enough bone for initial stability. Usually, okay, and they place the implants, and they say maybe uh, broken membrane, but uh, no problem. I know that, but uh, always they have uh, in, enough bone for initial stability. But uh, I think the growth factors uh, cover the implant and protect the implant, but also protect the uh, sinus. So Perfect. I think is I think is the best. And also, you can use this technique also if you have not enough bone for initial stability and no complications. Really, uh, very very few complications. Mm -hmm. uh, no sinus. No. No. no, no. No sinusitis, nothing like this. No, 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 really no. That's good because very, 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 very. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I saw, I saw it in some case to even to treatment of sinusitis. Uh, sometimes I use the PR, I use it the the PRF to treat sinusitis uh, after uh, some complication, after some surgery complications, and I think that we have some uh, enzymes inside of the PRF, such as beta dampensine 2 and beta dampensine 3. And those uh, enzymes will help us uh, to protect our sinus membrane, for sure, and to protect yes. our sinus from other infections. Yes, but it's important always not do this when you have an infection in the sinus, a big infection. That's, okay. yeah, it's very sure. important don't go to, to do this, because that maybe you have problems. Or when mm -hmm. we are talking about uh, healthy signs, mm -hmm. but uh, because in reality the implant is not is not in contact with signs, but is around all these uh, growth factors, the autologous growth factors. So that's why uh, there are not problems. Mm -hmm. You are bringing one interesting technique for uh, our for the human uh, application because I already see something. Uh, from Sao Paulo, a group from Sao Paulo, he, he in Brazil, they they work it with uh, apes, and uh, in the in and they place the the dental implant inside of the sinus, and after that, they they saw the bone around of the dental implant, and then that's uh, that's why I know that your technique is very good because. I know even if you don't have a huge bone around the implant, I know that you have a small layer of bone around the implant for sure. And keep the implant uh, stability. <clears throat> you know, today the people <clears throat> doesn't want to suffer. If you do a lateral window, it's a very big surgery. <clears throat> and after no all dentists know how to do that. So this is a, a procedure that is very friendly to the patients and also to the doctors. It's mm -hmm. like you do a crystal approach. You can do also crystal approach. Place uh, growth factors, and if you have preparation, no problem. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. uh, it's an easy way to place implants in the sinus. I don't say if you have okay, if you have extre extremely uh, no bone, maybe you have to do lateral window. But the most of the cases with, with IPG death, you can resolve these problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Most of doctors has uh, have some problems to to create the lateral window, and normally they have some complications, and sometimes they like to to abort the the surgical procedure, and then that's not that's not good for for him and for the patient for sure. And then the crystal approach is a very good uh, technique to use, and uh, I think that your technique 
now with more evidence that you uh, and you show it it for us, and it is very good, very good for everybody. Yes, we have more evidence now, and we we are uh, also uh, more uh, research going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that. <laughs> yeah. And we have also something very interesting now because we did surgery. Uh, maybe next time we can show this. Uh, we did lateral window, take it out all the membrane, all the sense membrane. We placed direct propagulant stem cells and implants without bone at all. And we have very good results also in these cases. Amazing. I mean, something different is coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. And then I, I agree. Uh, you, now, as you told me, as you told us, uh, you, ha you have a, a lot of evidence. Uh, more than in 2016 in Rio, and then now you showed us uh, very good papers, and then thank you for that. Uh, let's see if Sandeep has some some question for you. Uh, where is Sandeep right now? Genor? Hey, how are you? So. Um... Yes, uh, thank you for uh, this wonderful presentation and what you have uh, informed us of today. Um, I think uh, our doctors uh, should try and uh, and uh, examine this uh, this particular technique, which could save a lot of patients a lot of pain and discomfort and time and uh, recovery time. Do you do a lot of placement? Uh, um, you directly wrap it around. I saw you do that surgery in Athens. Uh, you we wrap it around. We do a lot of, uh, usually, also during the program, we place more than 800 implants every every year. Uh, well, not every year, during the program. But um, uh, all, all over the year, maybe we place much more. That's we have a wonderful. lot of cases now with IPD dead. So how does someone sign up for your courses in, uh, in Athens? Um, they're welcome to come. Uh, you know, we can do a lot of a lot of uh, a big part uh, through internet. But if they like to have a live clinical training, they have to come here. That's wonderful. I really enjoyed my time when I came. Uh, I mean, it was first class service from the airport all the way to yeah. the, to the back to the U.S. Uh, thank you so much for that. With that said, gentlemen, um, we are uh, awaiting our next speaker shortly, which comes from the same. Uh, a tree uh, uh, as uh, as as Wagro, and uh, he will also be informing us on similar topics. Um, if there is, if there are no, I think there was one question that I saw. In terms of osteointegration, how this, how does the autologous membrane work? Sorry. Osteointegration. People are asking about what, uh, how did this membrane osteointegrate? No, uh, this membrane, first of all, you know, uh, the sinus membrane has, is, um, has also regenerative uh, properties, okay? Because after a few weeks, we have a uh, sinus membrane reconstruction and uh, the growth factors that are inside and also the growth factors that are coming from the blood circulation help for better uh, regeneration and be better uh, ocean degradation. But um, you saw the, uh, a lot of cases. We have really a very, very good uh, ocean integration because how Carlos said, maybe there is not bone everywhere, but it's around the implants, it's really bone. And um, this Amazing. is what other says uh, so to us. That's yeah, wonderful. I already, I already see some stud, some studies in, in monkeys, and uh, they showed this the, the the small layer, the bone, the the bone around the implant in the sinus, and then that's that's possible for sure. And then maybe it can it can be your next step. Maybe you can place two implants and one to to find uh, to show us the bone around the implant. Why not? Yes, maybe. <laughs> We'll try. Yeah. Definitely. And then, I, uh, it's a, a brilliant idea uh, uh, to be able to eliminate the sinusitis issue with uh, one's autologous blood concentrates. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'd like to, just to 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 
change one position that I uh, I said in the, at the beginning of the, this presentation. Uh, I said the because Eduardo Netua has a lot of papers. He's an, an amazing researcher, and I said the 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 PRGFB was published in plus one. My mistake. I'm sorry. Was publishing platelets. Okay, and then if you want to to read more about PRGFB and the reduction of growth factors to or the reduction of anticoagulants to increase the growth factors, you can find it in platelets uh, 2016. Okay, sorry about that. No problem. Thanks for the correction. Um, much appreciated. Gentlemen, what a wonderful session and thank you uh, not only for the presentation and hosting today, but also for your contributions uh, um, over the years uh, and uh, most recently to the 2020 peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, GIS event. And uh, all that you do for dentistry uh, selflessly and uh, we really appreciate it. Look forward to having more and more colleagues get involved with your academy as well as with your uh, with your uh, paper, if they have research articles they would like to publish, they can co contact uh, Dr. Morrow and uh, Dr. Ioannis is very, very easily to find on social media in terms of all of his activities uh, or via his email. Um, other than that, uh, gentlemen, uh, we'd like to close the session at this time. Is there one final message uh, from Dr. Ioannis for, uh, for his students across the world? You know, uh... <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, we learn everything in the university, but uh, I think there are more things and every day we have to learn. Never you have to say that you know everything because if you say that, nothing happens. Nothing. You are dead. Yeah. Always, every day, I, I still now, every day, I learn something more. And this is uh, very nice, of, I think, of our job. Okay, and I think we have to take the opportunities also to have the, uh, the bibliography, but to take the opportunity to be afraid to try. That's what I like to say. That's a wonderful piece of advice, given that uh, you're in practice and every day we practice and learn something new. Sure. I just, I just want only to say, if you want to learn more, and then I'm, wa I'm waiting for uh, a paper from Ioannis in our journal. The journal is, uh, cells dot org dot dot o r g o r g cells in dentistry dot o r g thank you thank you so much yeah. Yanni. thank you all of you lots and lots of growth factors in cells in dentistry all right gentlemen uh, i wish you guys a wonderful remainder of the day thank you for your contribution thank, thank you. you have a good one bye bye <laughs>